Okay, I think we will continue, but uh, with no equations this time, <laughs> except probably in the award at the comments. Uh, as a representative of, of SCORE Foundation for science, science, I am very happy to be here for the eighth time, for the eighth award of the Institut Européen de Finance and the, the SCORE Foundation for a Science Award uh, of the best young researcher in finance and insurance. And I very much like also the, the word insurance, as you may imagine. This year, uh, the jury prize was unable to distinguish uh, between uh, two competitors, and therefore uh, we have decided to have two very brilliant uh, winners uh, and very excellent candidates and uh, who will be awarded, which are uh, Irina Giadadze, I hope I am a good pronunciation of the name, and uh, uh, Olivier Guéant. And I would like to congratulate the two winners. The SCORE Foundation is very much interested in the interaction between finance and uh, insurance. As those interactions are multiple concerning the liability side as well as the asset side of the uh, insurance balance sheet. And as you may imagine, the consequences of both sides are very different in nature, but in fact very effective and sizable. These years, the winner have been focusing their research on the new stimulating modeling uh, that describes how financial assets are valued, more especially what are the monetary and financial uh, uh, consequences they are confronted to and how to best execute orders. I hope this prize will encourage to further continue and, and the candidates first and potential candidate in the future and uh, to continue their research and why not to f uh, focus on uh, insurer insurance rather than financial markets. Let us be proud of these two brand laureates and with them many success in the future. Please. So, good morning, everyone. So, thank you, Philippe, for, for these words. Uh, thank you also to Foundations, Foundation Score for Science uh, for this valuable collaboration. And thanks to all of you, researchers, practitioners, and regulators, for being here with us at the 16th edition of the Risk Forum. But above all, Thank you, uh, Irina Zviadatse and Olivier Guéant for being excellent researchers. As you know, we need uh, excellent academic research to better understand the complexity of our world, especially in the field of finance. Finance must contribute to the society in many areas, and an event like the Risk Forum is relevant to show and propose solutions to finance the ecological transition, reduce inequalities, or make better use of new technologies in finance. At the Institut Li Bachelier and in the two foundations, Institut Europlace de Finance and Fondation du Risque, we work to develop, promote, and share academic research. Our network is composed by academics, professionals, and regulators, as I said earlier. This specificity allows us to be at the heart of several research challenges that are analyzed in more than 70 programs covering four transitions, ecological, digital, demographic, and financial. Thus, thanks to this broad network, we can develop human capital and identify promising new researchers. Irina Ziadadze and Olivier Guéant are two such remarkable talents. As ladies are always first, I will start with a few words about Irina, who was elected Louis Bachelier Academic Fellow last year, thanks to her work and potential, which were highly appreciated. Today, this award is a further confirmation of her talent. We are happy to see this young female researcher recognized not only by us, 
but also by our partners and the surrounding academic ecosystem. I would like to share with you some background uh, of Irina. So she joined H HEC Paris in 2019 as Associate Professor of Finance after six years at the Stockholm School of Economics. She holds a PhD in Finance from the London Business School and she conducts research on asset pricing, in particular on the importance of unsystematic risk on financial yields. She has published uh, research in leading financial journals such as Journal of Finance and the Review of Financial Studies. Thus, we are very pleased to add uh, IAF's Core Foundation for Science Award Best Young Researcher in Finance and Insurance 2023 to our track record. Congratulations, Irina. It is now the turn of Olivier Guéon, who has been involved in the uh, IAB for more than 10 years. In fact, he has worked in several IAB scientific programs and is currently working on uh, decentralized finance and automated market makers. He was elected in 2021 as the Louis Bachelier Fellow and won the IF French Banking Federation Prize for the base paper in finance in 2016 with Chalambert Le Hall. He is Professor of Applied Mathematics at Paris 1 Panthéon Sorbonne University and adjunct Professor of Quantitative Finance at ENSAV. He leads a financial modeling team at the Centre d'Economie de la Sorbonne, a group of eight researchers and 10 PhD students. His research focuses on optimal execution and market making. In particular, he has developed state-of-the-art models that are used by dealers on OTC markets, notably in the FX and corporate bond market. He received the Rosemont de Massieu Prize for his PhD on mean field games in 2010 and has contributed to the academic literature with numerous articles. So we are also very pleased to grant him today's EIA Foundation Score for Science Award, Best Young Researcher in Finance and Insurance for 2023. Congratulations, Olivier, and I ask you to join on stage uh, for this prize. So my name is Irina Zviadadze, as I was introduced already, and so I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. And so I would like to start with um, a big thanks to SCORE Foundation for Science, Institute of Louis Bachelier, and Institute Europe Place of Finance. So since uh, you have already heard about my background, so let me skip a um, uh, description of what I've, what I've done before coming to Paris. And so let me talk a little bit about my research. So my research lies in asset pricing and spans different questions. Mainly I'm focused on understanding the risk return trade-off in asset markets, and I'm studying different asset markets, bond markets, uh, equity markets, uh, derivative markets, as well as foreign exchange market. So I'm looking at the risk return trade-off across different markets, but also across different maturities, or different horizons, investment horizons. So, um, let me uh, showcase my research by um, just um, giving you some um, quick dis description of what I have, uh, what type of questions I have studied and what type of answers I um, uh, concluded. So one of the papers I worked on was about profitability of carry trades. It's a very simple investment strategy. You borrow currencies in low yield environments and invest money in the high yield environments. And on average, you gain uh, a high excess return on such a strategy. So lots of researchers were thinking about whether this can be attributed as compensation to risk. And so that was the question of my paper as well, which was um, published in the Journal of Finance in 2015. So in that paper, I found that indeed, we can think about carry profitability being compensation for risk. I empirically identified the shock, which I labeled as an interest rate shock, and to which different currencies have very different exposure across different horizons. And specifically, I found that high yield currencies are riskier because they have high exposure to this risk. And this risk is important for macroeconomy because these um, types of shocks are going to have long last impact on consumption growth. So another type of research that they have been doing so far was 
concerning monetary policy and specifically interaction between monetary policy and asset markets. So with a number of quarters, we looked at uh, how monetary policy is conducted and we again empirically identified two types of shocks, unanticipated shocks into the monetary policy rule, so-called Taylor rule, and anticipated shocks into the policy discretion, which is a deviation of uh, instrument of the monetary policy and in interest rate from the, mo the monetary policy rule. And so we found that these two shocks have different impacts on asset markets, specifically an anticipated shock in the policy rule is correlated with the level of the term structure of interest rates, whereas an anticipated shock into the discretion is correlated with the slope of the term structure of interest rates. And so finally, let me conclude by just talking very briefly about type of work I'm doing now. So I'm looking at the relative importance of systematic versus unsystematic risk. So a conventional wisdom in financial markets is that only systematic shocks, which are common shocks across all the assets, are compensated. Because investors um, get exposed to the shocks and the bad realization of the shock happens in the bad economic state of the world, which is economic recession. We usually think that idiosyncratic shocks, or shocks specific to specific assets or industries, are not compensated because investors can dampen the impact of those shocks by investing in very rich portfolios of assets. So contrary to this conventional wisdom, what we find with my quarters is that systematic, unsystematic shocks are priced, and actually the price of the shock is very high, and so we look at different metrics. And so we relate these findings to the presence of market frictions, which are pretty pronounced, as well as behavioral biases. So thank you very much again. I'm honored to be here, and uh, I'm honored to receive this award and to share this moment with all of you. Um, so, uh, first, thank you. Uh, thank you to the two of you and the institution you, you represent. So, uh, Institut Europlas de Finance or Institut Louis Bachelet, I never know which one is it, it is. Both, but both. <laughs> so, both, <laughs> then in that case, I'm correct. And uh, so, the score Fondation pour la Science, Fondation Score pour la Science. So, I'm very, I'm very happy to, to have this prize and to share it with uh, an economist. So, I'm a mathematician, you're an economist, so I think it, it tells a lot about what the field of finance is and what the field of insurance is as well. Um, so uh, let me, everybody wants to have lunch, I think. So I'm going, um, I will go fast. Uh, this is like an ID card. You have seen my face maybe for quite a long time for some of you, but I'm 39, so it was below 40, so I, I precised it on the first slide. Um, but I will, um, uh, beyond that, you, you already said that, so I'll come to research. Uh, I, I worked on a few uh, on a few topics, but if I look at uh, ba basically a common theme, a common denominator, I think it's it's liquidity. And when you talk about liquidity, there are I mean there are two sides of the medal. There is liquidity taking, and there is liquidity provision. So on liquidity taking, I've worked on optimal execution. If you know, uh, one of the main models in this field is angular entry. So I worked on agency trade, so how to optimize executions, how to build execution strategies. I've worked on princip principal trades, how to price liquidity in some sense by uh, giving a price to a block of shares. I've worked on buyback programs, um, accelerated share repurchase. It was very common in the US, and now I think it's, it's like very up now in, the, in, in, in Europe, so I see, um, I see new, uh, new interest into that. I've worked also on like other classical topics uh, like portfolio choice or uh, option edging and to see what happens when we add some liquidity issues, like when we add some execution cost or when we add some market impact. So um, this is about liquidity taking and uh, regarding liquidity provision, which has been one of my favorite topic for quite a long time now, uh, it's about market making in fact. So a market maker uh, uh, set prices at the bid and at the ask, okay? Uh, and uh, he wants to make money out of that bid ask spread. He wants to capture the spread, but uh, just to make money. But at the same time, uh, he or she or it, because usually it's a, a, now it's an algorithm, uh, 
it, it wants to, to mitigate risk, okay? Um, I think it was, a, it, it, it was a topic that before 2008 was only qualitative in some sense, but the, the real first quantitative model about that, it's not completely true, but it, it's Avalanda and Stoikov that proposed the modeling framework, and with, uh, you mentioned it, you, you mentioned him, you mentioned uh, uh, Charles Albert, uh, so it's not this paper, but uh, we solved the equation of Avalanda and Stoikov with Charles Albert Leval and, uh, and a PhD student, uh, Joaquin Fernandez Tapia at that time, and then I really, I, I really worked a lot on this topic of uh, market making in OTC markets, so to add a lot of features that are realistic for FX and bonds like client cheering, what happens when you have some alpha or some signal but where the market should go, uh, when you don't know exactly the state variable, like where is the mid price, so uncertainty about the uh, state variable. Uh, we talked a lot also about uh, externalization versus internalization. When you have two segments in the market, one where dealers trade with clients, and when there is at the same time a D2D, dealer to dealer, or in term of market, how to proceed when we have this. And of course, there was a, I mean, to go from papers to somehow real models. Uh, that can be applied in practice, we had to solve, in some sense, the curse of dimensionality or to propose solutions to the curse of dimensionality to, um, to build multi-assets, so multi-bond or multi-currency pairs uh, market-making models. There, are still, there is still a lot to do. There are new statistical uh, uh, and filtering questions regarding where the mid-price are on illiquid markets. There, there are, and I can talk also about adverse selection. There are still, there is still a lot on the agenda. And as you mentioned, because of DeFi, decentralized finance, I was not expecting this because I was not working on blockchain or, or bitcoins or cryptocurrencies in general. Uh, but in DeFi, in decentralized finance, you see with these automated market makers the, the, that are new, you see, like, linked with this literature, so I'm, I'm very happy to continue on, on this. And if I can add a word, because, we, I mean, before we go for lunch, uh, well, thanks again. And um, at least for myself, I see it as an encouragement to continue carrying out research in close collabor collaboration with practitioners, because it's, it's really the DNA of what I do. And uh, so I would like to thank you for uh, like giving an award to this as well. Donc, je vais devoir investir dans une cheminée. Exactement. On est bien, on est serré, on serre encore un peu. Ça va très bien, c'est bon Parfait. Merci beaucoup.